Isaiah Warner was a born chemist. As Warner recalls, he performed his first experiment as a two-year-old in rural Bunky, Louisiana. From my parents, I'm told that I was always very curious at, a, at an early age. And uh, at the age of two, uh, they were using kerosene to uh, light up the house after electricity had gone out, which was very common in those days. Um, and one day they left the kerosene closet open where they normally keep it. And I went into that closet and opened the kerosene and drank it to test what it was that was making that light. Though this first experiment proved unsuccessful and left young Isaiah in the hospital, it didn't deter him from exploring the world around him and asking questions about everything. His parents, a housekeeper and a longshoreman, didn't really understand their son's obsession, but supported and encouraged him anyway. In fact, they bought Isaiah a chemistry set when he was around 10 years old. In high school, Warner took every possible math and science course, but pursuing science in Bunky, population 5,000, was a challenge, especially for an African American in the 1950s and 60s. The schools were still segregated, for instance, and Warner had to learn from old, outdated textbooks handed down from the white schools. But one high school English teacher changed Warner's life. She told him about a program called the Summer Science Institute at Southern University. That's the historically black college Warner planned to attend after graduation. And I already had been awarded a full scholarship to Southern, but she got me into this institute and that institute literally changed my life because after that institute, there were a number of other students. I was valedictorian in my class, and there must have been a dozen of us who were valedictorians of our class, or, or were, some of them were heading toward valedictorian. Some students were in the 10th and 11th grade. And the chair of the chemistry department then asked us uh, if we would come to Southern and major in chemistry, we could skip the first course of chemistry, first year of chemistry, actually. And so that was exciting to do that. It was exciting, but also difficult, as Warner and his fellow institute participants found out. The students struggled a bit in the next higher level chemistry course, and Dr. Vanden White, the department chair, discussed the situation with the students. And he went through each one of us and told us our singular characteristics that would make us very successful. When he got to me, he indicated, Mr. Warner, you'll have your PhD before you're 30. Warner worked in industry as a technician after graduating from college, but he grew bored after five years. So he went back to school and earned his PhD in chemistry in 1977 from the University of Washington. Warner became a professor at Texas A&M University and then moved to Emory University. Today, he's at Louisiana State University, LSU, where he is a Philip W. West professor of analytical and environmental chemistry and a Boyd professor, the highest honor for an LSU professor. He has won numerous awards for teaching and mentoring. One of Warner's achievements helped increase the number of African Americans in graduate school at LSU. And so all of a sudden in a department that had never had more than three, we suddenly have uh, 11 African Americans at one time, which is unprecedented. And so they had very good experiences and that number began to grow such that over the last 10 years, We've averaged 30-plus African-Americans working toward PhDs in chemistry. Warner established two unique mentoring programs for undergraduates, grad students, and high school students from very diverse backgrounds. For students growing up in challenging environments, Warner had some advice to give in this International Year of Chemistry. So you're not limited by your background. That's the message I want to give to any student. You're not limited at all by your background. You're only limited by how hard you work.